So we're up to the start of the Double Skulls Challenge Cup. And, uh, we've seen an earlier semi-final of this with O'Donovan and Fintan McCarthy taking that race. Who will meet them in tomorrow's final? Well, it's either going to be the crew on this side, Aitchison and Cracknell, from Imperial Itchin Imperial Rowing Club, or the men from the Tideway Scholars School and Nottingham Rowing Club, who are on the Berkshire Station. Sam Mayer and Matt Hayward, and that was a good start from both crews. And I have heard it said that Finta McCarthy, in conversation, did let on that the crew they're most worried about is this double on the left-hand side of Matt Hayward and Sam Mayer. Well, they were the Olympic spares, so they've been on training camp up until you know two weeks ago. Um, they've been out there with the men's team, um, both very, very talented scholars. Bags and bags of gold medals from under 23 World Championship medals to junior medals. Um, uh, so the, the form book is with them, um, being a bit sharper, but um, H and Imperial here sticking with them two thirds of a length. So I think one of the striking things about H and Imperial, because I, I don't think they're going to be in this race for too long. I think you know the, the class of, of Mayer and Haywood, 24 and 22 years of age respectively, is going to be too much for them. But uh, there is a James Cracknell at stroke of this Itchin Imperial Boat Club. And it's not the James not Cracknell. Not the James Cracknell. No, that's J.C. Cracknell. He's a J.A. Cracknell. Um, but it's his second time competing at Henley. He's competed in the Prince of Wales, which is the club quads uh, comp uh, crew for uh, crews that wanted to do that. And he's currently a decorator for Steve Taylor, whoever Steve Taylor is. Starts working at BNY Mellon in September. And he's a coastal rower from the South Coast competing in the Hanson Dorset Rowing Championships. So, coastal rowing. Maybe we're gonna see Mr. Cracknell if he stays in coastal rowing because the chances are that coastal rowing will make an entry to be an Olympic sport in the Los Angeles Olympics of 2028 off of Long Beach or somewhere like that. Yeah, sounds very exciting. But um, H Imperial, um, actually a coastal rowing club, and you know, you've got people like James Fode coming from the clubs and and transferring to this, what we call, you know, flat water. What's the kind of transition for them? Do you think they had tra practice much in the in the fine boats compared to the bigger coastal boats they row in? Or do they just rough it out in the sea and then jump in this when they come to Henley? I think they rough it out in the sea yeah, probably. and then jump into this. It's interesting with the, you know, the, the, the Trainieros, the Basque rowers who, who have a, a league, they row in the sea and they, they uh, train in the winter in, in sort of eights and so on, fours, and then they jump into the big Trainieros, the coastal boats that dive through the surf for the, for the summer sea even. So um, we're just reliably informed that the World Coastal Championships are in Wales next year. Saunders foot, which is thank you to our producer Michael. He's very timely with all this information. So um, let's let's dive back to the race. Mayer and Hayward on the right of your picture. You can see they have a significant lead in this headwind conditions over Aitchinson and Cracknell. Mayer and Hayward still up at pace. Jess, would you say? Yeah, they've not let off, um, and they're. Certainly open up the lungs here. So Matt Haywood coached, he's the, the scholar closest to us in the blue vest of, of Nottingham Boat Club, uh, coached by Nicola Benevente, who would have been delighted when Matt Haywood took the Wingfield Skulls challenge on the Thames early this year. It was on telly for the first time, very exciting. And then, of course, Matt was the... British single trying to qualify for the Olympics at the final Olympic qualification with Gatter in Luzerne. Didn't make it through that time, but uh, as you've heard, this was the spare. These two were the spares for the British quadruple that took a silver medal. Yeah, absolutely stunning men's sculling team there. You know, you've got these guys are the spares, and look how good they are. And you've got Graham, who's racing here in the single, and Graham and John, incredible effort, fourth in the double skull. And wonderful silver from our men's court so it's looking good 
from and quad and double and single going forwards. And if this is the future right here, then it's in a good place. He's so dynamic, isn't he, Sam Mayer, the 24-year-old in the Tideway Scholars kit of yellow and red. Just and, and, and also he's so barrel-chested. I mean, the enormous sort of leverage that he can get when he opens out his his sort of back through the middle of the stroke against you know pushes through the hips. Well, um, I hope you forgive me, but he's, he's pretty small. <laughs> uh, so he, he almost has to, you know, almost be do what a lightweight does and work with what he's got. He's got quite long arms there. He's got a nice leverage, keeps it low and down. He can't reach much further. So he's, he's doing as much as he can with what he's got. And that's made him an incredibly efficient rower and a very successful one. So it's Mayer and Haywood on the right of your picture. Drones flying with us, coming up to the stewards' enclosure, just past Revenham. And on the left of your picture, it's Aitchison and Cracknell from Itchin Imperial Rowing Club. And I think surely we're going to see the double from Tideway Scholars and Nottingham Rowing Club just edge down a little bit, do you think, Jess? Yeah, I think you probably want to start soon. They've got, they've got a little bit of distance to go still, um, but that looks fairly comfortable. And Bouncy is probably saying, just keep moving. They're certainly probably not putting the same power down for the spoons, but keep moving, keep it lively. Let's practice this. And, and, and if it's feeling OK in the last couple of hundred metres, you start thinking about tomorrow. But as we see time and time again here, it's not over till it's over. And it still takes a lot of poise, a lot of skill, and a lot of clear-headedness to get down that course, even when you're winning. Do you think anything in their minds is is going to the clash they'll have tomorrow against, or likely to have tomorrow against O'Donovan and McCarthy? Yeah. Oh, you you look at who's racing, and you probably see your progression, and you're thinking, how am I going to get there in the best shape possible? Because they're the standout crew in this event, Olympic lightweight champions. Um, they're certainly who they're looking to. And right now, you're probably starting thinking about it tomorrow. So if they are thinking about tomorrow, Mayer and Haywood will gradually be easing down. I think you can see there they're just taking a little more time over the back end. That's the bulk of Matt Haywood, all 111 kilograms of him. 94 kilos, the man in front of him. Pretty sizable, but uh, would you say relatively small in terms of male international rows? Yeah, I mean, male rows are anywhere between yeah, probably 85 upwards, but um, yeah. Sam is um, quite muscular, but uh, a bit shorter than your average rower. So, um, yeah, 94 is probably on the smaller side, which is hilarious when you tell a normal person. <laughs> it is, isn't it? So, the Scholars and Nottingham Rowing Club double make their way towards the finish. It's been fairly serene progress, particularly in the latter stage of the race. They take the semi-final of the Double Skulls Challenge Cup a little easy there and they will wait for their opponents from Itchin Imperial Rowing Club Harry Aitchison and James Cracknell to cross the line before they congratulate them on a good race.